bug bites. Thanks for coming to my speech today. Today we're going to learn how to fly fish. Today in America, there's about 1 in 100 people that consider themselves active fly fishermen. It's a growing hobby, and it's a sport that I took up when I was about six years old. My dad gave me my first fly pole and taught me how to fly fish, and I've been fly fishing around the world ever since. So today we're going to talk about four things. First, the history of the sport, um, how it got started, and how it got popular in America. Two, setting up your equipment and what equipment you need. Three, we're gonna talk about casting and setting the hook. And lastly, four, the etiquette and some good places around the United States to fly fish. So, without further ado, let's talk about the history of the sport. History of the sport. So it was created in England around 1000 um, AD. What they basically wanted to do was emulate a trout, which was native to England's basic, um, fly, or a basic um, what they eat. So what they eat is um, a fly that sits on top or below the water. So what they did was they created artificial flies out of hair, different um, things. And what you're going to do is you're going to put it on top of the water, and the um, fish is going to come up and eat the fly on top of the water, set the hook, and that's kind of the basic gist of how it got started. It got started. Um, in America right away with settlers coming to um, America. They used it to, for food as a pastime. Famous people have done it throughout our history, such as Henry David Thoreau. He once said that um, fly fishing is, people will fly fish their entire lives um, without knowing it's not the fish that they're after. Kind of a philosophical thing about fly fishing. So now that you know a little bit of history about the sport, um, let's talk about your equipment. So, with your equipment, what you're going to need is a basic assortment of flies. They're going to be different depending on the type of year and um, where you're fishing. So that's always good to have a good assortment of flies. A net, which we'll talk about a little later. It's going to be the most humane way to get the fish um, to you once you've caught it. So that's that for. Wears, so these are going to keep you dry when you're in the water so you don't have to be cold. Also, most waders are going to have a protective um, film on the bottom called felt that's going to help you with traction when you're in the water so you don't fall down. And then obviously your reel and your rod. So now that we've got all of our equipment, I'm going to teach you a little bit of how to set it up. If you've ever set up a tent before, it's basically just like setting up a tent. Just put it right into the next one and it will get smaller as you go to the top. And uh, most of them are two pieces or four pieces, depending on, this is a four piece. So after you've got those put together, you'll put the reel right here and feed the line through the different eyelets. And once you're done, it'll look a little something like this. So um, once you've got it all fed through, you're going to attach the fly to the, to the line using a basic fly fisherman's knot. So if you can see this. Um, basically, you're going to create a loop around the hook, twist it three or four times, and all you're going to do is go back through the loop that you created with attaching it to the fly, and back through the big loop you created, tie it, pull it. That's basically all you need to do to set up your equipment. So, once you've set all of your equipment up, we're going to talk a little bit about casting. So, um... When you get started casting, it's important to remember two things which uh, normal fishermen with regular fishing poles um, usually do. It's not about how far or how fast or how strong you can cast it. It's all about technique and timing. So when you get started casting, you're going to pretend like this um, pole is an extension of your arm. So you want to make it pretty stiff and keep it firm. Second is you're going to keep it all in a straight line. So when you come back to cast, it's all in one straight line. You're not going to the side or making loops or any big swaths. Third, you're gonna pretend like this side of your body is a clock with points at 10 o'clock and two o'clock. So what you're gonna do with 10 o'clock and two o'clock is 
when you bring the fly off the water, you're going to stop at 10 o'clock for a pause and stop at 2 o'clock when you bring it back down. What that's going to do at 10 o'clock is it's going to create um, tension, load the line, and bring it forward. And then when you stop at 2 o'clock, all it's doing is bringing the fly and flopping it back over um, the line and onto the water. So that's basically casting. Stop, stop. It's not about how hard or how fast. It's all about the technique. So once you got pretty good at casting, we're going to talk about setting the hook. Once the fish comes up, you're going to watch your fly. You're going to come up, grab the fly, and you want to set straight up into the air, not to the side or anything like that. It's going to be the most humane way to get the fish, the hook into the fish's mouth. So now that you know how to cast and set the hook, we're going to talk a little bit about etiquette and where are some good places to fish. So, once you've got that fish on your line and you've got it um, to the shore or to wherever you are, you're going to take your net and get it in the net. And most fish all have a protective slime around them that um, helps them prevent disease and bacteria. So you always want to wet your hand before you touch the fish. Be really gentle. Never touch the gills or anything like that. Take the hook out of their mouth. Take the fish out of the net and very lightly put them down into the water, put your hand under their belly, and let them push off. And that's basically all the etiquette you need to know when you're fishing. Um, where you can fish around the United States, most trout fishing, which is how normal fly fishing started, um, is around cold water streams and high elevation areas. That's in the western United States and some parts in the eastern United States. I fished in Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, Idaho, um, in Montana, as far up as you can fish in British Columbia, and as far south as Chile. So, but that's just for trout. You can also fish all around the United States for different types, for bass, for pike, and you can even fish in the ocean for things called bonefish. So, it's really a sport that you can do just about anywhere. So now that you know how to set up your equipment, a little bit of history about the sport, casting, setting the hook, and some etiquette, um, I just want to take this time to say um, once you get involved in the sport it's really good to get involved in the community as well with the sport um, visit your local fly shops they'll have more classes to teach you how to cast and tie flies um, yeah and they'll also have really good know-how on where to go and what to use so it's really good to get involved with them and I just want to say that it's been my favorite hobby growing up and uh, it's a good lifetime hobby that you can take with you wherever you go. So thanks so much for listening to my speech and uh, hope you had a good time.